Hi, and welcome to this video on managing the transition from GCSE to a level study. First of all, congratulations on making it this far. Completing GCSEs are a significant milestone, and completing them is no small feat. As you probably already know, A-levels are a whole new ball game. They demand more in-depth understanding, greater independence, and a higher level of commitment. It's a big step up, no doubt about it, but it's also a fantastic opportunity to dive deeper into the subjects you're passionate about and really start carving out your academic and career path. In this video, we're going to explore what makes the levels different from GCSEs, the challenges you might face along the way, and most importantly, how you can successfully manage this transition. Whether you're feeling excited, nervous, or somewhere in between, we're here to help you navigate this journey with confidence. First up, let's talk about the number of subjects. At GCSE, you might have studied a wide range of subjects, but at A-level, you'll be narrowing down to just three or four. This might sound like less work, but there's a catch. A-levels go much deeper into each subject. Instead of skimming the surface, you'll be exploring topics in far greater detail which requires more focus and understanding. With fewer subjects, you'll have more time to dedicate to each one, but this doesn't mean the workload is lighter. In fact, the intensity of the study often increases because of the level of detail and understanding required. You'll be expected to manage your time effectively, balancing the demands of each subject, while also developing the ability to work independently. The good news is that this allows you to become an expert in the areas you're passionate about. By focusing on just a few subjects, you have the opportunity to develop a deep, nuanced understanding and to build the kind of knowledge that will set you up not just for your exams, but for future study and even your career. Next, let's address the difficulty level. Our levels are significantly more challenging than GCSEs. To put it into perspective, achieving a grade 8 at GCSE is roughly equivalent to a grade D at A level if you don't make any progress. This means that if you got a grade 8 at GCSE and attempted an A level paper now, the highest you are likely to achieve is a grade D. That's because A levels aren't just about recalling information. They're about applying and evaluating that information in new and complex ways. This doesn't mean that if you didn't get a grade 8 at GCSE, you will fail your chosen A-levels. It means that regardless of your GCSE grades, you will need to work hard at your A-levels to achieve the best grade possible for you. This brings me to another major difference, the shift in skills focus. At GCSE, you might have been used to memorizing knowledge and recalling it in the exam, but A-levels demand much more. You'll need to think critically, analyze data, and apply your knowledge to different scenarios. Examination technique becomes crucial. You'll need to answer questions with precision and depth, going beyond basic recall to demonstrate real understanding. And remember, cramming the night before when cut it at A level. You'll need to study continuously from the very start. Building your knowledge and skills over time is the only way to succeed. That means aiming to do between 30 and 45 minutes of independent study for each hour of teaching time. To be clear, independent study is not homework. This regular study routine will help you stay on top of the material and be fully prepared for your lessons and when exams roll around. One of the biggest changes you'll notice is that you'll be asked to form and express your own opinions. It's not just about repeating what your teachers or textbooks say. You'll need to critically analyze what you're learning, develop your own perspectives, and support them with evidence. This is a key part of what makes A-levels so rewarding, but it also requires you to think more independently. In short, A-levels are a big step up from GCSEs, but with the right approach, you can not only manage the transition, but thrive in your studies. Focus on building depth in your knowledge, refining your exam technique, and developing your critical thinking skills, and you'll be well on your way to success. 
Let's now talk about how to get off to a strong start with your A-level studies. Hopefully these tips will help you make the most of your time and set yourself up for success. First up, let's talk about how to use your non-contact time effectively. Non-contact time is that precious period between lessons or when you don't have a scheduled class. It might be tempting to see this as free time to relax or catch up with friends, but remember, this is actually focused study time. Treat it like gold. Use these hours to review your notes, get a head start on homework, or do some wider reading. The more you use this time wisely, the less overwhelmed you'll feel when deadlines start to pile up. Speaking of wider reading, one of the key differences between GCSEs and the levels is the expectation that you'll go beyond what's taught in the classroom. This means diving into books, listening to podcasts, and watching documentaries that relate to your subjects. For example, if you're studying economics, try listening to podcasts that discuss current economic issues. If you're into English literature, find some interviews or lectures by authors and scholars. This not only deepens your understanding, but also makes your study more engaging and relevant to the world around you. Now let's clear up something important. Homework and independent study are not the same. Homework is what your teacher assigns. It's specific tasks designed to reinforce what you've learned in class. Independent study, on the other hand, is driven by you. It's about taking the initiative to go over what you've learned, making sure you really understand it, and extending your knowledge further. This might involve revising class notes, practicing past exam questions, or exploring topics in more depth. Both are crucial, but independent study is where you really start to take control of your learning. Next, let's talk about organization. Being organized might sound basic, but it's absolutely essential. Always take the correct equipment to your lessons, whether it's textbooks, notebooks, or any specific materials your teacher requires. Complete your homework on time, and don't leave things to the last minute. A well-organized student is not only more prepared, but also more confident. And that confidence can make a big difference in how you approach your studies. And don't forget, if you're struggling with something, ask for help as soon as you need it. Whether it's a tricky concept, a challenging piece of coursework, or just managing your workload, your teachers are there to support you. Don't wait until you're overwhelmed. Reaching out early can make all the difference. It's a sign of strength, not weakness, to seek help when you need it. Finally, make it a habit to regularly go over your classwork. This isn't just about revising for exams. It's about reinforcing what you've learned and making connections with new material. Our levels are all about building on your knowledge. So the more you can link new information with what you already know, the deeper your understanding will be. Set aside some time each week to review your notes, identify areas where you need more clarity, and consolidate your learning. In summary, starting your O-levels successfully is all about using your time wisely, being proactive in your learning, staying organized, and not being afraid to ask for help. It's a big step up, but with these strategies, you can take it in stride. Remember, the effort you put in now will pay off in the long run. So. Get organized, stay focused, and make the most of this exciting new chapter in your education.